listener feedback song. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Why are you not applauding? I don't know <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of No Results, No Excuses, where we talk fitness nonsense and partial facts. My name is Matthew Barman, and as always, my co hosts, Courtney Dick and Justin Juggernaut. SWAT. Quinton. Quinton. Quinton Jingle Bell SWAT. Yes. His shoes are jingling. <laughs> jingling. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just decided to drop my lifter while Matthew was introducing himself. Did you get those from the North Pole? Uh, <laughs> these white and black Reebok lifters. Yeah, they have uh, jingle bells on them. They have jingle bells on them. I mean, I'll give you an example now. Yeah. If I drop it, it gives you a very Christmassy. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> it's to irritate his competition when he's lifting. Yes. And they wonder, yes. what's going on? This guy's jingling. Do you, think this, that? do you think this would be classified as classic? Uh, a few years from now, yeah, looking back, like the this, classic this Reebok lifter when they first launched the proper um, uh, size heel and sort of like oh, they proper but I was made say, for professional got, weightlifting. Uh, CJ Cummings, no, not in this yeah. one. No. CJ Clarence Cummings. CJ Clarence Cummings. Yeah. He was. He was. He had a signature on it and the shit. Yeah. No, yeah, but he had, he had it's exactly the same one. He had the gold one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gold heel, black upper. And he has no mm. problem hitting one fifty cold. Mm. Not like Justin Swats. No, yeah, big no, pussy. I got a warm up. Yeah, but your hips also work. Not like CJ's hips. <laughs> <laughs> Shame, CJ. Everybody thinks he can't um, stand up straight. Lock out. It goes to the toilet. But I think he's done so much weightlifting in his life that unfortunately he's just in he's, constant. He's uh, fused. Like Flex- constant flexion. flexion. Yeah. When he's fifty, he's not going to be able to walk up straight. He's going to need a walker. That's an interesting thing. I mean, what is uh, what is the state of? Um, okay, well. Uh, What's his name? Niam. Who? Niam. The guy that died. Liam the weightlifter. Weightlift, oh, Niam. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> are you swearing enough at once? <laughs> Niam. Niam. What's his name? Niam. Niam Suleimanoglu. Is that his full name? Yeah, yeah. So he was the pocket Hercules. He yes. was one of the best weightlifters in yes. the world. If he was alive, uh, what is the state of his knees? Like, I don't know. You probably have uh, two artificial knees. And his lower back. Yeah, artificial back or also. Or who else? Uh, Dimitri. Klokov. Klokov. That's why his legs are skewed. And what's the other uh, the other Greek man? Um, well, uh, Lefteris. Lefteris. Um, yeah, Lefteris Theophanidis. Okay. He's the one with the skew, skew arms. Isn't it skew? Yeah, his uh, arms uh, are the one arm is short and the other arm. I'm just trying to think how much data do we have of all these guys <laughs> and their hips and stuff like that. Just on that note, I think a guy like Klokov, his bone structure has morphed over time due to the sheer loading yeah. Of the na- and the nature of of the squatting mechanic, yeah. Yeah. and uh, like loads uh, north of two hundred and fifty kilos. Yeah. Um, Is that why he walks like he's riding a horse? Yeah, like he's, yes, his he's bones, like he's just sitting his on bones a horse. have actually like bowed. <laughs> they over time they've taken the form of of yeah. like as if he's been riding a fat horse yeah. for like twenty years of his life. That's a lot of lifting. Um, but then so what I also wonder is, do these guys have bad joints because of the sheer nature of the sport or is it because they probably weren't as professionally inclined to do mobility and stretching hmm. pre and post oh no those guys have got lifting. great mobility so I wouldn't worry about that yeah but what I'm saying is like the guys of old I'm saying like uh, are we going to see guys that are doing crossfit and weightlifting um, extensively now yeah. also 20 years from now complaining of like fucked up knees and hips or are, we, doing all the... or are we going to say that their joints are actually healthier as a result yeah I don't what know. do you think I don't know. I think in 20 years, Justin Swart won't be able to walk either. You think so? <laughs> he can't do the dishes. In. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, you're talking about me, but Matt had a knee surgery three months ago. Yeah. Mm. He hasn't even done CrossFit for six years yet. He mm. hasn't. He should have uh, stretched more. But I ran for my teens. Yeah. A lot. Not competitively. But just uh, running. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, then I had the op maybe when I was 18. Oh, yes. Your knee was already compromised. I already had an op, yeah. yeah. And that was, I mean, like... Uh, it's so stupid. When you're young, I was just like, oh, just click in and it ached a bit. And then the doctor was like, oh, I'll do it up. And I said, okay. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, like. You probably didn't need that up. You don't think about it. You probably didn't need it. And yeah. then we don't know if you try to repair it because then that might have made what, what tore now. Yes. 10 years later. Yeah. And I can see Courtney's dying to get into uh, the actual episode. The actual episode of today is uh, news. Which is episode uh, 15, I think. 15, yeah. So it's a congratulations. Master. Well yeah, done, guys. To the big yeah. one five. Yeah. I never thought we'd make it. Yeah. But uh, we did. All the haters, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who did that one star on Apple? Yeah, right? Someone gave us a one star review. They really hate us. No, fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you. 
<laughs> Jeez, man. People yeah. are logging in and seeing that one star and scrolling past our episode. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we have such amazing content. So send us a DM. Stop being a, a little baby and yeah. hiding behind uh, your anonymous name. Yeah, it's hiding behind the little sliders, stars and stuff. <laughs> yes. Okay, so, go on, Courtney. In the news, uh, Carrie Pierce. Do you know who that is, man? Um, she is uh, the fittest woman in USA. For fittest, I mean, fittest Cape Town. Uh, in Cape Town, in America. the CrossFit Games. Yeah. I think. But she's this year as well. I'm not sure. I'm I just, sure I just think she's been stamped at as one of the fittest. She's the one of the girls that I think uh, could be the the USA winner if there will ever be a USA winner. Yeah. Do you, would you say she has very good abs? Uh, yes. Yeah. So then she's I think very good at everything. I'm just a bit concerned that you're not pronouncing your name right. Yes. Is it Kari? Kari. Is it Kari or Kari? I say Kari. Because you're pronouncing it as if it's spelled it's Jim Kerry. Jim Kerry. Yes. Jim Kerry <laughs> Pierce. Well, I'm not Kari? American. Jim spelled J. Y-M or G-Y-M? G-Y-M, okay. Carrie. <laughs> yes. It's really swole. <laughs> swole Carrie. So, since uh, Carrie Pierce has good abs, she's qualified to write this book. Uh, and you can get it for free on her website. And it'll tell you how to get good abs, just like Carrie Corey. Oh. Um, so, I downloaded the book. I haven't done it. That's why I haven't got good abs. But um, I'll tell you some things about it. So, yes. you can sign up. It's pretty easy. But you have to give your email. As you have to do with all things in life nowadays. Wow. All, all the free things. Yeah. How, many, your email. How, how many minutes a So month? it's not free. You're giving away your your email account. You're going to just get spammed. Your identity. Your identity. Yeah. How many minutes a month do you waste unsubscribing from emails you've submitted? I, I, I just delete them all the time. And then mm. one day I'll just get irritated and just mass unsubscribe from mm. 10 emails. Yeah, yeah I always yeah. do that. I, I do at least once a month. I spend about five to ten minutes unsubscribing, archiving. Mm. It's hectic. Mm. I yeah. did it for my wife because it was annoying me. And I said, "Don't you see any of the messages?" She's like, "No, well, like there's a lot of stuff, and you know, what's this?" I go into it, and she's got two thousand unread, selected all, marked all as read, and then went through like a month of stuff and just unsubscribe, unsubscribe. Yeah, well, they still get you. Yeah. To make it even worse, uh, you also need to create a, a login name and a password. <laughs> yes. Which so is just she, ridiculous. And then you so have to confirm me. your login name. Yes. As if you didn't type it right the first time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get an email and click on the link. To make sure it really is you. Yes. So there's that whole double opt-in thing. And it's then you have okay. to select all the robots in the picture. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> all the robots. Always the buses. Yes. So you get it wrong always the first time. You're like, oh, fuck, it reloads. Do you know uh, a cool story? Is that this recapture thing um, where you select the robots and oh, stuff. Oh, I'm not a robot. Yeah. It used to, remember, it used to show words. Yes. Yes. It used to show a picture uh, with some words in it. Yeah. And you, and you type what is written on the page. Or like really badly written letters. Yeah. You know, yeah. what we were actually doing in those days, years ago, we were digitizing books. And we didn't know. So this recapture thing was a really clever way that some oh. guy invented to digitize old books. So they'd take photos and instead of paying people millions to type them out, oh, yeah. we were doing it for him. Sure. And uh, that's what they were doing in the old days. So that, but that means they were scanning a page and taking every little word, cutting, so uh, obviously zooming in and yeah. recreating. Oh, they must have written a program to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we were actually digitizing books for them. That's old a good books. fact. Yeah, that's a cool fact. I want to see the books. That is quality content. Yeah. yeah. If we don't get more than our average listeners on this podcast, <laughs> I wish we quit. Yeah. I wonder how many they did on one word, just to make sure. Just to make sure, yeah. This one's correct. Yeah. That's yeah. probably some algorithm. I wonder how there. many, yeah, you can't spell it wrong, can you? I won't accept it. Just write funny things. Yes. <laughs> Keep say, going. No, say, right. What happens if you like type it in wrong <laughs> yeah. and, and it gets submitted? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just do stupid things. So, uh, this book, once you've created your login password and are irritated now and you have to remember a password and add it to your password manager, uh, you can read the book as a flip book online, which is nice and irritating because every time you want to read it, you have to log in. But you can also print it. And when you print it, it prints in a really cuck way. Uh, I sent it to Matt actually and it was a massive file and the book was like in the corner of the page and it was just really irritating. Look at my abs though. Yeah, look at your abs. Fantastic. He's done <laughs> it. I've been working on He's it. done one workout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a great book. Uh, it's, it's got lots of ads in it, which is irritating. Um, but it's, it's a very well made book. It's not your typical cheaper little ebook. So it talks about gymnastics, gym, genetics, nutrition. It shows you exercises. And it says you'll get abs in 30 days if you do it for 10 minutes a day, which is quite the claim. It doesn't say anything about uh, eating uh, really well. So <laughs> really crap. Do I think we'll give you good abs no, as well? No, this is going to stick out. Yes. So if you've got like a little layer of fat there, or, or a big layer of fat. Yeah, we'll push them out. So they claim it's just going to be pushing these pointy, you're going to have pointy abs. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's John gives you good thing. abs as well. You take a baking tray and you lie on it for 30 minutes. <laughs> there we go. stand up. <laughs> really good impression. And you have 12. 
12 abs. Um, yeah, so there are 30 exercises with descriptions and pictures, and it has level 1 and 2 options if you're a beginner or if you're an advanced uh, sit up person. And yeah, there's 10 full workouts, so it's pretty cool. So you can sign up for that and get spammed forever, like I'm now getting. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, did you read any of them? Hmm? How many workouts did you look at? Did yeah. you look at the whole thing? Yeah, 30. They're quite, 30. They're quite good. Yeah. It, like, give us an example. Or... Oh, fuck, I can't remember now. Okay. I didn't print it, bring it with me. Oh. But uh, yeah, it's good stuff. She's I think it's shredded. awesome. Do you know why? Because how often do you recall being back in school hmm. and looking at textbooks which you deem to be really old material? Yeah. I mean, when I even went to university, there were some textbooks which were deemed credible but outdated in my opinion like the pictures were old the the models you could see like the style of clothing they were wearing was like from 20 years ago and like I'm not comparing this to a university textbook but I am saying that it's great that someone like Kari is taking the time to put some modern content together for physical training yeah you know um, I guess we're gonna have to keep doing that for the rest of our lives to ensure that people stay engaged and relevant yeah thanks yeah. Kari Thanks, Corey. So now you got my email. What else we got in the news, Just So, the Open didn't finish too long ago, mm. and um, the whole entire CrossFit world decided to jump right into the first sanction of the season. Yeah. Filthy 150. A terrible name. Terrible name. I mean, if you know the workout Filthy 50, yeah. and you times that by three, you get a, an idea of just chaos happening at a sanctioned event. Yes. That's kind of what I imagine. It's <laughs> an island. Happening in, in the island. middle of Ireland <laughs> amongst the lush... Fields and cows and sheep and Guinness and Guinness yeah. beers. Yes, yeah. apparently the beers there are great. Yeah. Um, but I think um, just to zone in on what happened on the weekend, uh, Sarah Sigmund's daughter did really really well. Uh, she had two event wins, four second place finishes, three third place finishes, and she finds herself in a very fortunate position because she's not only qualified through the Open but obviously through the Sanctional as well. Yeah, and um, we learned from. I think last week she takes the open as her ticket to the games and yes so that means the sanctional stuff pushes down yeah yeah you mean that the backfilling mm, process yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll chat about that or who received it as a result but um i just wanted to say like i think it's really for, cool to see an athlete like that be in a position where so early in the season she can attend like a sanctional yeah. um or a few for that matter and not have so much pressure on her to perform mm. and as a result perform better yeah, yeah. you know because the stress and the anxiety yeah. is often we know like Sarah Sigmund's daughter has a tendency to um, make mistakes in the past because of that pressure um, and hopefully this is a good season for her as a result yeah. so will she win the games that is the question I'll say no because she did the same thing last year at the same competition or was no it was the UK yeah. one yeah uh, she won strength she and won depth. rogue as well Rogue as well. She won two. Yeah. Uh, two she's maturing as an athlete. Yes. Yeah. Takes a really long time to win the game. By the time she's 35, she'll have been matured. And messed up knees. Yes. And at home. Also can't walk up straight. Mm. Having yeah. multiple Icelandic kids. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So as a result of, of uh, Sarah Sigmund's daughter winning, uh, the backfill process um, obviously was implemented. And uh, we had an athlete by the name of Andrea Solberg. Um, who put forth a very impressive performance um, win the ticket to the CrossFit Games for the first time and I think what's even more impressive is the fact that she's a medical school student uh, which means that she she's finds busy. herself uh, with a very busy schedule and uh, earns a lot of respect from me yeah, oh, good. well done I saw her she, so what was she she was fourth she was fourth yeah. so do you know the names of the people between mm, no. no I know um, Kristen Holte Holte yeah, she was did very well um, was she's she's my um, my my vote for for the, the winning of the games this year. Yeah. Oh, man, she just to floats up at the top there all the time. She's really good. It. She's like Scott Panjic. She probably never win, but just yes, close. Always there, and finally, just like fuck it, I'm not doing it again. I yeah. don't want Tia to win again. No, like I'm tired of catching. I'm tired of Tia. I'm tired of Matt Fraser, man. I don't want to yeah. log on to Team Richie and watch him spend a whole season in Australia filming Tia Tia Toomey's backyard. <laughs> you must film Andrea Solberg. Yeah. This girl that won, she. Uh, she looks so ordinary. She doesn't look like Sarah yes. and Chris. She's a normal Chris girl. Yeah, they all like jacked. She looks like this normal girl just ran onto the um, yes the field and won. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and then the men. And American. I would have to just give a little bit of a drum roll on this one. Mm-hmm. We had Justin 
Medeiros. Never heard of him. <laughs> 21 years old. Wow. Congratulations. I thought Justin loves it because it's the same name as your Justin, name. Uh, <laughs> Justin, Justin, uh, one. Oh, that, oh, Madeira. That, that, yeah. that deserves a whole orchestra. <laughs> Never mind a drum roll. <laughs> but essentially, he is the youngest winner ever of a sanctioned event. Ah, good. Can good. you believe that, Courtney? He's 21 years old. I've never heard of him. He finished 68th in the Open. He has a mullet. And you know what's even more impressive That's is the guys impressive. that he placed ahead of on the podium, Tim Paulson and Roman Krennikov, those two athletes place much higher in, uh, on the open leaderboard than when he did. Than him. Yeah. And I said to Chris, uh, my coach, I said, that's inspiring. Number one, he's young. And number two, it just goes to show that uh, a sanctional programming can be in your favor, provided yeah. that you perform, irrespective of a predetermined ranking. Yeah. You know, so for any athlete like myself, or I don't know, AJ Fisser going to a sanctional from South Africa, even Alan, it's like, Yes, it would help if you're in the top 50 in the world. Like yeah. Jason stands a phenomenal chance of doing well at any sanctional, hmm. given his experience and his ability. But the programming does play a big role. And I have to say, like Justin Medeiros did a phenomenal job. Um, and he seemed very humble and mature about it. So yeah. good luck to him. Good, Justin. He's the whole year to, uh, to practice now. Yes. To get better yeah. at his whatever he was bad at. And then the teams... Yeah, some the people there I've heard of. I know Brooke Haas. I know that name. I don't know that name. You don't know Brooke Haas? Do you know Brooke Haas the big booty? Haas book? means rabbit. Yeah. Rabbit, yeah, Brooke Rabbit. Do you think she's Afrikaans? Yeah, maybe. She's from uh, Pretoria. We should ask her and uh, she should give us some background. No. <laughs> <laughs> on, 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 <laughs> I don't know who this person is. Where's my Brooke Haas, Miss Google her. Yeah. So they're from the Romwat Meat Squad, which is a terrible name. Yeah, that's really bad. Yeah, they de- they're clearly not vegan. When no. I read that, I, I looked at it and I thought, why are you calling them that? No, that's their name. Yes, and then I, I, clicked, name. I clicked like the second time I came to the sheet and I read it. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you're thinking of the other Brooke, uh, not that Brooke, not yes, Brooke Wells. So you're thinking, thinking about of, the other Brooke. Yeah. Brooke Wells, Brooke Entz, Brooke Haas, there's another Brooke. Yeah, I found Brooke Haas. Let me have a yeah, look. Yeah, I don't know. So, anyway, they won. Congrats to them. Yay. Yay. Let me look at Brooke. And, oh, uh, sorry, Brooke. I'm not very so good. there's Brooke and uh, Christian Harris and Kelly Baker and Dex Hopkins. Dex is a nice name. It's like a sounds like a scientist. Dex, like Dex. Dexter's Laboratory. Yeah, this yeah. reminds me of or that. Oh, Dexter time. the Murderer. Yes. Yes, I enjoyed that series. Which was a good series. Do you know that I watched all seven seasons? I think there's eight seasons, and I just never got around to the final one. Oh, you just gotta go Google it. Like, what the it. fuck is yeah. the point of that? It's a disappointing ending, but I heard so. Yeah. But no. go watch it. I never watched any of that. I don't have time for that. Just can, once you're done switching, can you come sit back up with us? I only watch Top Gear. <laughs> so can't hear my you. My is so tight, man. His so is. Do you know that Courtney sat in the middle last week? I listened on my big speakers at home. Oh, now you're loud. And even though he's, and even though he sat in the middle, I still couldn't hear him. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to go back to that uh, the handheld mic. I'm, 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 I'm very deliberately soft voice. staying nice and calm and quiet. Talk, yeah. talk in a gruff, loud voice. Low, low, gruff, loud voice. Maybe that's your. That's how I'm going to talk for the rest <laughs> of the show. I'll talk like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to be more manly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and I'm going to speak from far away <laughs> yes okay we're going to stagger the room can you put an echo on my voice echo. yes oh no not right now okay we need a mic for you then okay. we can okay yeah, voice changer <laughs> okay <laughs> we need voice changing technology speaking Speak- of technology yay! <laughs> good oh, oh, oh. you I'm are nowhere. just <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> so our main topic today as Justin just said is technology yay. in sport play the song Technology and sport. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> we didn't bring instruments today. No. So, we were listening to the Science of Sport podcast, which is a cool podcast uh, by South African people. Uh, Ross Tucker, who's a sports scientist, and his co-host, uh, Mr. Co-host Nan. I forgot his name. And uh, they have a, a, a podcast talking about different sports thingies, and the latest one was about technology in sport. So we had a listen and we decided that this was really cool and we were going to talk about it uh, ourselves. But uh, apply it more to fitness than to like rugby and soccer and, yeah. and things like that. So... And by fitness do you mean CrossFit? Uh, fitness, gymming, bodybuilding, Gym. powerlifting, uh, okay. anything that's not like a, a team sport of uh, kicking a ball and running around and yeah. stuff like that. Kicking a ball? What is that? What Kicking a ball. That? That's an AMRAP, 90 minutes, uh, as many goals as possible in 90 minutes. 
That's the only way Matt understands it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as many tries yeah. as possible in 90 Matt, minutes. Matt, Matt's <laughs> always making fun of these sports that involve balls and bats and rackets. Yeah. But I just don't think he's given himself enough time to fall in love with it. Yeah, he plays a good game of uh, beach volleyball. <laughs> I watch a good game of beach volleyball. <laughs> yes, he loves that. Uh, so, what is technology in sports? Um, and I think it's important to, to remember that technology can be everything from little things to big things. Like they were saying in the podcast, a crash mat and uh, the, um, what's it called, the high jump. So like 50 years ago, when people did high jump, they landed in sand and they couldn't, uh, they couldn't jump on their backs because you'd land on your head and that would be the end of you. So uh, simple things like a crash mat is technology in sport. Yes. So, and obviously that made a huge difference. Uh, the pole vault. Before, before they invented little foam crash mats, people did the pole vault into sand. So you can imagine they weren't coming down from 10 meters up in the air. Yeah, that must have been a story on the meniscus. Eh? Yeah, like imagine landing on your head from 10 meters it's in the like, air. I only have two <laughs> knees, so um, basically my career is as long as my knees hold out. Yeah, we'll yeah. test the first one and then we'll go for Yeah, basically two weeks. <laughs> two weeks of training. <laughs> yes. So little things from having like thumb tape uh, to bigger things like having indoor rowers and... Uh, uh, ski ergs and bikes and that sort of thing. I mean, if, if this was a hundred years ago and they never had an indoor bike and you lived in a cold place, you could only train in summer. Yeah. So just by having a bike that's inside, you're basically doubling your training volume for the year. Yes. So little things like that. And then to more modern things like uh, uh, computers and uh, wrist-worn technology. Mm -hmm. So measuring your heart rate on your wrist, that's something that's pretty new. It's only like 10 years old. Yes. That we've been able to measure things like that. So, um, can I tell you a little story about technology and sports in my life? Yeah. So when I started athletics at school, um, I didn't know anything about it. I just got told I needed to be part of the team because apparently I could run mm. and I would attend the races on the Tartan track with no shoes. Really? And basically they said, don't worry, all we do is we take some of this uh, rigid tape and we'll just tape two layers over um, the ball of your foot and um, essentially you run your race and um, your toes might get a bit blistered but yes. the, the, like 90% of the, 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 the forefoot strike will take place where the tape is situated mm -hmm. and then you just get on with your day after that. I would have said no. Um, <laughs> and like over a couple of years where I started developing a more keen interest in running, you start figuring things out about spikes. About shoes. So like when I was in grade eight, I ran barefoot and blisters everywhere. And then by my trick, I had a decent pair of Adidas spikes, which uh, were absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it took um, you five years to get shoes. It took me five years to get shoes, but my, my, my feet had no more blisters and I ran much, much faster. Yeah, on his first race, he was much faster. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, technology at work. Technology Your at work. feet must have been so sore for those four years. Bruce, can you imagine running in Paul on, on a tartan track? Yeah, a hot, at, it's like 40 degrees. A hot, uh, like rough track. Anybody would run fast. You yeah. must have ended up with pads. 100%. You just like, it's just like a just, dog. Yeah, you would end up like pads after a few months. <laughs> yeah. Can uh, you believe it? Sam? There's someone sitting there uh, scraping them off. Oh, yeah. They grow you tough in Mountain. Yeah, so that's crazy. Okay, some examples of this technology, big examples actually, which made uh, lots of nude media and made a lot of people angry. Nude and media? A lot of people, nude media. Oh, good. And, uh, <laughs> I like, I like that. That's why media. it made a lot of people actually happy and <laughs> only a few people angry. <laughs> yes. 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 Started with clothes on and became progressively more naked. Nude media, yes. <laughs> you know, there's some images on Google of people training in gyms that are deemed as nude gyms. What? Go okay, check it out. out. No. As in, everyone in the gym is naked. Oh, no. I I'm that, that How sounds... did you find that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I stumbled across that. I think that that's fine for the first 10 minutes until you have to use the machine after a big sweaty man. Yeah. yeah it's a bunch of people. I, yeah, I'm telling you now, it's out there. <laughs> it. it must Google be near Sandy Bay. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sandy Bay CrossFit. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so this was the first biggest one. Um, back in 2008, uh, it was the Beijing Games. Uh, Beijing Olympics. Olympics. Yeah. And... Um, that year, there was a huge amount of records broken. And uh, why was this, you ask? Which sport? This, oh, sorry, it was swimming. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. In the, in the whole uh, Olympics, the whole Olympics. Whole bunch of, everyone was just eating the right things. Um, uh, there was a huge, huge amount of records broken in swimming. And it turned out that they had uh, brought out this swimsuit that was uh, super tight and mm. streamlined. And uh, everyone was like, woo. 
look how these people have broken records. Yeah. So, so that's I, what happened. I think I that was called the LZR suit. Jeez, I don't remember this. Justin all. remembers. The are we talking about the the what do you know? 2008, the, the speedo one. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it was I called the, right. after the laser or the LZR. Yeah. And essentially what happened was everybody um, started developing this understanding that if you were to break a world record, you had to buy the suit. Yeah. So it was not only an economic issue, as in, like, imagine you went to the Olympics from the DRC hmm. and you bring your speedo that you've been wearing for, I don't know how long, yeah. 25 years. Now that you're at the Olympics and you've got this guy, Michael Phelps, next to you with a fully kitted LZR suit, which costs X amount. Like that was a that was a whole different story altogether. But the mm. point is, it started becoming very prevalent that if you didn't have that suit, you weren't breaking records. Yeah. Yeah. So they started discussing over a period of time, like, how can this be deemed fair? Like the playing field is so economically uh, biased, number one. Um, and number two, like records that have been standing for years, Courtney. Mm were being broken like this yeah and not just by like a split second like some of them were being broken by one or two seconds which in swimming is yeah a fucking huge margin Big piece. yeah um so then they i don't know what they finally decided but i think like i remember having discussions while i was uh, swimming back in the day like we were debating what they should do with these new these records do they reinstate the old ones do they take the medals away from these swimmers? Or do they just say, during this period of time, these records get given an asterisk and say like, hey, these were broken with a certain environment, um, but these are the records of old, yeah. broken well, with speedo and chest hair. I can tell yes. you, in cycling, they changed a few things. Mm, mm. Tell us. <laughs> in 2003, I think I wrote 2003, or oh, it's 200L. Um, cyclist... Uh, you trying to read it? The year two hundred L. When's that? I don't know. It's a backwards L. It's a Roman uh, Roman uh, year two hundred L. Cyclists uh, were breaking records, and uh, basically what happened is they uh, fixed the bike in a different position. So I think they leaned forward um, yeah. or something like that, and um, it was obviously uh, really improving in these guys' times. Mm. Um, it was the one hour distance. It is one hour uh, max, time distance. Drop. No, max distance. Max so distance. You just go as far yeah. as you can in an hour. Um, that so must be the worst thing in the world. That must be oh, must so burn. incredibly painful. It must burn. Yeah, what what oh. motivates you to want to do that? Is this? I don't know if this was circ- like that circle cycling. A circle. There's a circle. It's going around. Yeah. This is even worse. Yeah. So you dress like a like a you're from Tron and you're yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Going around. Yeah. Circle. Circle. Do you imagine? Can you imagine the adrenaline that must go through your body going around at that speed? Though? Oh yes. man, it must be so yeah. painful. If you wipe out, it's basically tickets. Yeah. yeah. You're either going up on the side or yeah. you're going into the middle, yeah. like little poles in the middle and stuff. Basically, so in 2000 they realized this because everyone was unhappy and angry or whatever, and um, they fixed the the shape of the bike so you are forced to kind of sit straight on like a normal up. person yeah. 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 and um what happened was the new cyclist i don't know if it's in 2000 or now um new cyclists are only marginally better than those guys from two back from in like, 2003 i think yeah so uh what does that say so that it says, shows that the, the the people haven't got better like the actual human being hasn't got that much fitter than years ago it's because i've been, been having fun with their technology yeah this technology makes you better yeah um okay another big one let's leave the big one for last um mm-hmm. okay this one we tried to ask him for an interview but uh he was busy couldn't get, get, get hold of him. couldn't get hold why, of him. Why, why not he's not answering his phone he's a really busy guy oh, okay um he was the blade runner oh um, mm. where is he now I don't is he know. still in the slammer <laughs> <laughs> playing sure. slammers so, yeah um yeah he got to run able body uh races yeah um, i remember that double mvt i think that was cool is it a double mvt someone uh born with uh, amputated leg. Oh, I think amputated if you if you have it amputated, you can still you still classified as a double double amputee. Double amputee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. To 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 suggest that you were born as a double amputee means that somewhere between the birth and the conception and coming out, it was it got cut off or removed. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you're just born without legs. You're not born as an amputee, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's uh, I don't know. We're not doctors. But I was just gonna say, that, I think that was an awesome spectacle watching him run against able-bodied athletes. Mm. The debate will always remain, though. Yes. Was he being have an advantage? Assisted? Yeah. Did he have an advantage? I mean, those things are light, so you're not carrying around your big heavy yes. legs. And apparently, well, they 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 give a bit of bounce. They're not supposed to. I think mm. that's mm. what they argued. And there was something. There's another good thing that they said in the podcast that they argued against. I was like, oh, I must remember that, but I forgot it. Uh, I think it's. I think you're right about the bounce, and also, um, they're like tendons, but better, because mm. you don't lose energy. Ah, uh, that's what it was. It yeah. was they tendons, and they don't. Also, they don't. They, they will always be strong. Your 
human body tendons they uh, they break down they break down and eventually. they get tired and um, this works running with super yeah. metal tendons yeah so carbon tendons. when you run your tendons get tired obviously yes they get fatigued and these legs don't get fatigued because they're machines <laughs> yeah okay next one um, so the slap skate clap skates mm. um, <laughs> so in speed skating I love speed, <laughs> I love speed skating <laughs> Slap skate. Slap skate. Uh, you just slap them on. You, you go slap them on and go. And you win. <laughs> so um, in speed skating, uh, these guys invented new skates and they called them clap skates. Mm. And what we think from uh, reading is that uh, there's a little hinge on it that makes your foot stay on the ground for a bit longer okay. than it would. And um, it's basically started breaking records. So yeah. everyone got angry. But the yeah. interesting thing about this one is it didn't happen immediately. So it wasn't like we all went and bought some and uh, we won, like the swimming did. Yeah. It actually took people, you had to learn how to use the clap skates yes. to be able to do that. But then it happened and now everyone's like, oh no, don't use the clap skates. You know what? When technology comes in, I think the, the sporting bodies, they need to say, right, for the season of 2020, we acknowledge that X, Y, and Z technology is available. Uh, this will only be deemed um, usable for this tournament if every athlete has access to it. Yeah. Because you cannot claim it as being a superhuman feat if it was just an average feat, but the technology did the rest for you. Mm. And then your competitors don't have what you have. Mm. You know, it's like, it's like trying to do uh, your max Olympic lift with a barefoot versus shoes. wearing yeah. uh, the shoes. best weightlifting shoes in the world. Like mm. There's going to be a difference in power output to some degree. Yeah. Maybe Bronny Stove, Bronny Stove would guys. disagree, but... You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, like, the human body didn't get better with all these changes, the swimsuits, the bike, and all those sort of things. It's just the technology made us look fitter than mm. we actually are. No. Okay, here's the last big one. The big, um, the current big one. Mm. So, yeah. um, the Nike Vaporfly, do you guys know what that is? Yeah. A bit better than the, the um, Nike Fruit Fly. Yes. The fruit Fly. <laughs> a little bit better. <laughs> doesn't irritate it's you when you're trying to eat. Yeah. It just doesn't <laughs> get up my face. Vaporfly. <laughs> so, this shoe can yeah. give you a 4% increase in your performance, in your ox oxygen depletion, what, what is it? Yeah, energy yeah. expenditure. Yeah, your running economy. So mm -hmm. I think you use 4% you use less oxygen when you're running in these cool shoes. This one has fact behind it. Yeah. Science behind it. Science, yeah. So, um, obviously what we're getting to is the run from the, what's his name, the guy that won this year? Uh, uh, Kipoji. Kipchoge. Uh, Kipchoge. 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 Yeah. Um, he wanted to, did he get the 4% increase? I think he had, he was actually in the next percent, which is like the one after <laughs> yes. the four percent, even yes. better. Four percent increase on his running economy, four hundred and forty four percent increase yeah. on his returns. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you selling him uh, him uh, life insurance? <laughs> you put so, in four percent, you get four hundred and forty four percent back. If you run faster with these, it yeah. helps you increase by a, a four percent. Around yeah. four um, percent. If you're a really fast guy, it can help you up to two point four percent. So the faster you are, the less it helps you. But uh, mm. it still helps you. But anyway. that over, how long did it take him? It was an hour. Two hours. Two hours, sorry. Yeah. Um, whatever that comes to. But that's a huge, you know, advantage. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's all I have for you on those extremely big, controversial stories. Do you think you should get these uh, Vaporfly 4%? Um, they cost two and a half thousand rand. On that, on that note alone, no. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> but they have carbon inside them, which helps you bounce. Listen, yeah, I bought myself a new pair of Reebok Nano 9s uh, only because they got discounted twice. Oh. <laughs> they usually go for like 2,400 Rand. I got yeah. them for 499. Jeepers, yeah. why don't you tell us about that? Uh, you have to be size 8. Yes, oh. I'm a size 8. Sorry. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried that if I tell you, you get there before me. Oh, yeah. Which, which is very can likely. You share, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, you can, have, you can share them. The left shoe. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah, if okay. you leave your Nanos at home, use mine. Okay, good. From tomorrow, I'm leaving my nanos at home every day. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you a bit more about technology as forward, Courtney. Yeah, tell me. Matt, are you listening? I'm listening. All right, well, in weightlifting, no, let me say this. We've come to learn through coaching a lot of people in CrossFit that human beings have incredibly stiff ankles. Yeah. All right, if you say that to most people, you've got stiff ankles, they'll look at you a bit weirdly and say, well, how the hell do you expect me to stretch them? Yeah. All right, it's not very well known. Uh, body part to stretch um, but essentially weightlifting shoes can accommodate for poor ankle flexibility mm. the way they're designed with the with the added heel uh, but what it also does is it creates superior angles for lifting 
mm. uh, which obviously helps with power output and bar path. So yeah, in weightlifting, I guess that's a massive technological. That's technology, yeah. Um, element. Yeah. Uh, compared to you know lifting in a pair of school shoes like, uh, like our, our friends our do, friends, yeah. like we did from, in the back in the day. Yeah. From. Uh, Taking them to the local cobbler. Yes. Putting a heel on your tuffies. <laughs> from the bog. Yes. <laughs> You take your toughies and you put a heel on them. I'll put a heel on there for you, my boy. I'll tell you, you what, lift. some of the fastest lifts I've ever seen in South Africa come out of a pair of school shoes. And yes. the most noisiest. Yes, very noisy. <laughs> like, you know that looks happening, you heard it. <laughs> bah. The, after, the after effect is huge. Yes. What is the standard uh, height of the, the heel? Is it two, two inches? Two inches. I'll have to consult with um, the centre judge. I'm not sure yeah, off the I top of my head. Inches. I think 1.75 to 2 inches. You get the Innovate and you get the, the Reeboks and you get the Nikes. Well, these are the popular ones. The Romanias are very popular. And then yeah. all have, um, I think all these ones have some of the same heights. Yeah. Yes. The Innovate were short. The Pretty first Reeboks I got launched didn't have the standardized no. Olympic weightlifting height. They just had like a, a, a suggested Yes. Heel. They're like, fuck it, let's just make it a little bit higher. Yeah. A little bit. Just, just to help these guys. I think they're worried <laughs> that CrossFitters couldn't handle the big heel. <laughs> well, I'll be honest, when I first upgraded, it felt so different. Like you're on your toes. The angles... The, yeah. the angles changed for me and as a result I felt like for about two weeks my lifting was off mm. until I adjusted um, and now it's just phenomenal now you are technology and human merged addicted yes he's addicted to his heels I, I struggle to take my lifters off <laughs> he with them and they, in the morning they merge a little bit more <laughs> soon you're not going to be able to take them off no <laughs> you'll be walking around like a man horse <laughs> just like someone uh, somewhere is wearing Matt's lifters that got stolen from his car <laughs> bastard one day I'm gonna drive down the road I'm gonna see someone wearing those Romanias oh man I went to Gumtree and I looked I looked and then I went on OLX to see if someone is selling like cool Nike shoes yes <laughs> yes because these like don't know well, you know what imagine they don't know what he, the hell these shoes this are this Bergie for. probably put these lifters on yeah and said to himself lick a Nikes yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then walked a kilometer <laughs> and said, fuck this. Yeah, and I'm threw dumping it in the it. dustbin. <laughs> well, they probably fucking filed the heels down. Yes, maybe. Oh, yeah. man. Or maybe he just uh, became a phenomenal tap dancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I guess the next point I want to raise is uh, making use of training diaries, uh, be it a digital diary or even just a manual diary. Yeah, um, diary. I think a lot of athletes have experienced. A lot of success with like via uh, writing down their thoughts and their feelings and their results from daily performances and then having some elements of retrospective analysis uh, to look back and assess where they are and where they're going um, obviously the digitized format allows you to capture way more data these mm. days like a, a regular Excel spreadsheet or through the use of applications on your phone um, I've personally tried them all out and I enjoy using my own uh, Excel spreadsheet, which I populate uh, almost every single day. Yeah. Um, it's probably the best thing that holds me accountable to where I need to be. You know, so uh, when I walk into the gym and I know that I have a, a task for the day, um, I look at my diary, I'm like, what have I done in the past? How long ago did I do it? Um, and do I believe in my mind, in my heart, that I'm capable of achieving more? And Hopefully, if you're on a good program, the answer is yes every time. Mm. So you go in, like before you even pick the bar up or before you even a attempt uh, the gymnastic feat, it's like, yeah, you know what? I can do this. And you take a lot of confidence with you. So again, it's not like a fancy, sexy version of technology, but I do think it creates a good psychological boost for the athlete. Yeah, it's such a simple thing. And if you come into a class in the day yeah. and you look at someone else's numbers, it's almost the same thing if you've got the right mindset. Absolutely, absolutely. The whiteboard like, right, can serve myself. as, as a yeah. form of diarizing. You know, it's, a mini, it's a mini whiteboard, basically, if you're looking at your own number. 100%. And there's always, there's, there's always the, the banter in the box, like, oh, if I go before you versus mm -hmm. you go before me, you know, you have a slightly better opportunity to... Um, chase that number. Chase that number or, yeah. or create a strategy around improving, you know? Some primitive technology. No. Definitely. Uh, do you guys want to know a bit more? Yeah. That's All right. Well, let me let me tell you. Tell so, <laughs> video analysis, Thanks. massive fav favorite of mine. Um, <laughs> I love video analysis personally. Um, I should do more of it. Uh, I will say that I'm mostly limited by the size of my iPhone storage. Um, <laughs> but nowadays, I don't think you can perform any professional sport without a trusty tripod and some form of uh, camera, be it your iPhone. 
um, be it your Canon or your yeah. what's another brand? Nikon. <laughs> Nikon. Yeah. Um, essentially, you need to be able to coach yourself if your coach is not around. Mm. Um, and nowadays, the world is such a small place that sometimes your coach isn't in your ear 24-7. Yeah. Your coach can be on the other side of the world and give you feedback just through the video footage you supply them with. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's, there's nothing like a good slow motion uh, review on your Olympic lifts or uh, your running stride or um, the way you are um, sort of approaching a bar muscle up. You know, there's, there's different elements that you, the eye can't catch in, yeah. in, in such real, in real time. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, do you, um, in CrossFit, uh, yes. for you, do you ever analyze like a, a, a 10 minute workout? Uh, and say I could have yes, it up there. I'm yes, I do. Touch point. I should start I'll there. say. I I'll say. This way I'll say. Way. I think it's more common for athletes to do that around the open time. Yeah. But I definitely think there's a lot of value in. Again, this comes down to time and effort. But I do think there's a lot of value in almost analyzing every single workout every single day. The the likelihood of that happening, I think a lot of people will tell you, is not good. Mm. Um, but like, let's just take a random workout um, like that involves squat snatches, rope climbs, ring muscle ups, and something else that's technical. I was gonna say those are, geez, those ones are definitely the ones that everyone can improve on. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Like, like you just gotta just watch yourself over and over again and yeah. say, what do my movement patterns look like? Where am I uh, being least efficient? Where am I bleeding energy? And and the funny thing is, you'll take a games athlete or any top level athlete. And if you look close enough, you'll find something mm. that can be worked on. Yeah. And I think, I think that is actually where the technology in this sense is, is most valuable. And is that creating an environment where the athlete never, ever thinks that they've mastered the sport. Yeah. Or um, whatever they're doing, because you can always improve. Yeah. Always go back to basics. You can always go back to basics. I think that leads us nicely into, into something we wanted to talk about, is yes. how the coach uses technology. Sure. Because you obviously coach a lot of people, uh, normal class people and, uh, and uh, competitive athletes. So I wanted to ask you, and they were talking about it a bit in the podcast as well, you, you obviously haven't been coaching for 30 years or whatever, but... Feels like it. Feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> After a long week. He looks like it too. Yes, he looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> Great hair. But uh, do you think there's a change in how you communicate with athletes now? Since we've got a lot of young athletes now in, in, in the gym currently. Yes. Uh, kids who are, uh, and young adults who are more used to technology. Whereas in the past, you would sit someone down, you would draw a picture of a little stick man on the board, you would go through some patterns. Mm. Now, we're using technology to do video analysis, to show yeah, YouTube videos, stuff like that. You think it's changed? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think it's... <laughs> I'm just going to say this generation, I'm not going to say the younger generation. I think everyone that has access to an iPhone most likely has access to YouTube and Instagram. Mm. So whether they're watching videos of themselves or watching videos of professionals performing a movement sequence or um, a certain lift, they have immediate um, an, an immediate option to tap into knowledge. Mm. Um, so like for example... The, cross, the preferred gymnastics course is always releasing snippets of what they're doing on their seminars. Yeah. Pamela Agnon is always um, releasing videos on how to deconstruct and then reconstruct movements to perform better. Yeah. And then sometimes it just comes down to a simple video of yourself yeah. or a friend saying, hey, courts, did you notice that when you do a bar muscle up, you don't keep your legs together? You're losing tension through the middle. Yeah. And you're like, no, I didn't. Re- I didn't realize that. Someone, I heard coach mentioning it to me. I didn't understand what he was saying, and yeah. I, I struggled to keep my legs together. Yeah. Because um, my surname's Dick. Yes. And it's too big. Um, essentially, you know, this is an issue, but I can see it now, and because I can see it, yeah, I can change it. So let me give you another scenario now. So if, let's forget about the the competitive athlete. Yes. There's like five of you to one coach and yes. the coach can look at everyone. Let's take a class. Yes. You come into the class, there's uh, 10 to 15 people in the class, sometimes more, yeah. and we're doing a workout. Now, as uh, some of these big gyms are doing, they're giving all their members, uh, well, it's built into the fees somewhere, obviously, uh, heart rate monitors. So the coach is sitting there and he's got a little screen next to him and he says that uh, during the workout, 
Matt's heart rate is 140. Courtney's heart rate is uh, 152. Yeah. Justin's heart rate is uh, 175. Is this an idea or is this happening? This is happening. <laughs> Where is this happening? In America. Okay. CrossFit gym. Uh, no. Okay. Big commercial gym. Soul Cycle. Uh, I think it's called Orange Theory. Okay. So uh, uh, that might be Australian. But anyway, so these guys are, are giving uh, their members heart rate monitors, and the coach is saying, "Okay, Matt, uh, you're going a bit too hard. Uh, slow it down a bit. Uh, Justin, stop being a lazy little bugger. Uh, your heart rate's 110. You mm. should try a bit harder." <laughs> That's what they do. Uh, what, what do you think about that? Do you think that'll work? Sure. Number one, I just think capital investment. Yeah. That could it's be an issue. It's ideal world. You've got ideal all the money world. Utopian in the world. environment. Yeah. I would have to say, it sounds, it sounds feasible. Yeah. And I'm sure as technology becomes cheaper and more integrated into society, you're probably going to find that it's actually not such a big thing to expect this like from a business yeah. in the fitness industry. Um, and you might even find with with a legal. Um, legal battles and implementation that it might even become mandatory like you need to know what like where your members are at what and what spectrum with their heart rate yeah um but this i think the heart's exploded but i think <laughs> heart rate slowed down heart, yeah, you know what i mean it becomes very almost like roboticized like matthew i know you want to go faster but your heart rate suggests you shouldn't so <laughs> please put that weight away yeah. you know yeah. um and and here's the thing heart rate is such a subjective thing like you could have a double espresso before you work out and your heart rate can be like 20 beats higher than what it normally is. Yeah. Or you could be um, operating on minimal sleep yeah. and come in and have your heart rate elevated because your body's struggling to yeah. to produce energy and oxygen flow throughout the, the body. On the, um, on the opening thing on the website, it says science-backed. Science-backed. Science oh, well, in Florida. That's yeah. Found it. Listen, I think... You, you know what? I personally have to do a little bit more research on this, but you might find that it's um, the program is very aerobic-based. Yes. So it's like you come in, you get on a bike, and everyone starts at, at, at 100 watts on the bike, and we check the heart rates, and it's like, they know, if the heart rate is below 150 beats, we're good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's add 20 watts, and everyone starts cycling yeah, a bit faster, yeah, yeah. and let's add another 40 watts, and like, uh, Matt... Abort mission, abort mission. Your heart rate's 200 you're beats a pop, minute. You're gonna pop. You're gonna pop. <laughs> Slow and down Matt's like, two. Matt's like, oh, I had a couple of vodkas last <laughs> night. I, I'm, not, I'm not handling this very well. Um, like, jeez, I don't know. We're making jokes here, but it sounds very rigid. So let's, let's ask two questions then. From the coach's perspective, yes. Justin, and from the athlete's perspective. So we'll ask uh, Matt first, since Justin's already answered. If, if someone said to you, we're at CrossFit, we're gonna give you all uh, heart rate monitors, would you, and you're gonna see on the big screen, uh, on the computer, while you're busy working out, you're there in your 25th chest bar and it says your heart rate's 170. Would you want to see that or not? No, it wouldn't bother me. You wouldn't want to see I it? I have the watch already. And no, but I mean, check it all. forget about the watch. Uh, if it was just in real time on the screen, would you? I'd look at it for fun. For fun? Yeah. But would it make you go faster or slower? No. No. Jess? If, if someone said we could do it tomorrow in the, in the, in the in 12 o'clock class. But remember, he's competitive now. Yeah. No, no, for the average class. Yeah. So, there's, do, as you as the coach, do you want to see the, the real time heart rate data for 20 of your athletes in class? Or of me? Um, I'm going to say no based on personal experience. I once did Fran with a heart rate monitor on, yeah. and it told me that my, my heart rate was over 100% yeah. of what it should be. It was yeah. something like 202 beats per minute, uh, which I think can be expected from Fran. Yeah. But like the whole notion of having that data available to me, mm. heart rate monitor on while I was doing thrusters and, and pull ups, like. It just, it was, I found it stressful. Yeah. And I found that that, that, that information for me in the moment um, was creating like, you know, analysis paralysis vibes yeah. like, oh my God, is it dangerous? Should I stop now? Should I stop going hard? Yeah. Have I gone, have I overdone it? Should I do that again? Yeah. You know, like, am I, am I risking my health? Um, for the average member, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think so. No. Yeah. It must be nice for these people. I mean, good for them if they're going there and training, but afterwards it's like, oh, I got to 200. Oh, yeah, I got to 180 only. Mm. High five, high five. Yeah, it's like, home. oh, let me see if I can get my yeah. heart rate to 220 beats. Yeah, yeah. That was a fun class. Yeah. As long as no one's dying. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Courtney, just to, I think it must be said, like somebody must be thinking of listening to this, like if people, and I'm going to speak from a CrossFit perspective, if more people were having like heart failure or cardiac arrest, as a result of going too hard, mm. then maybe it would be necessary to monitor your heart rate. Yeah. If you have an athlete coming in, he's 65 years old, he's had a stroke or a heart attack in his life, and yeah. he wants to do CrossFit, I think he should be governed by 
a heart rate monitor and some strict instructions from a cardiac specialist. Yes. yes. Um, but, I mean, have you ever seen somebody have a cardi- cardiac Mm-mm. issue class? in class ever? Not yet. Hopefully Not never. Yet. Hopefully never, right? You guys do no. have those uh, the AEDs. We have yes. the AED. It's ready. <laughs> yeah. Stay clear. Have you been trained on it? Yes. So have, you, have you given it a good jolt? I've... You, As in, like, have I practiced a, with it? Go, f- go fetch it, bring it go in. Go fetch it. You want to try to? <laughs> I'll sit around that beautiful <laughs> chest of yours. I'm ready. Give me on it. I will fucking shock you. We'll see you next week. <laughs> have you tried it on a dummy? Like a uh, yeah, we put on a dummy and it's like, says, stay clear. Really? Is it dangerous? Shocking. Three, two, one. Beep. This is going to boom. Like yeah. in the, like in the, yeah. oh. Jeepers. Okay. Yeah. We did it on I, I, I did it with GB back in the day. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say I did we, it on we, someone. We must, we must tag GB in this in this uh, podcast, please. Um, GB's a great guy. He's got a great sense of humor. And I was new at, at Cape CrossFit, and um, you guys know what Jobs looks like, right? Mm. Yes. So this woman pulled the dummy out, and she said, "GB, please come and show me that you understand the procedure and what you're doing." And um, GB proceeded to call the dummy Yobst. <laughs> <laughs> so GB had rocked up on the scene. Yobst was lying on his back. And he was like, Yobst, Yobst, are you awake? Are you okay? And he started kicking and prodding Yobst. And I'm supposed to be like supporting GB and calling for <laughs> assistance. And I'm just laughing. Everyone laughing. Chris was probably it, there too. It was just, it was one of the best moments ever. You know? Um, <laughs> And yeah, we managed to resuscitate Jobs and everything was okay <laughs> after that. He's still alive. Still alive. For the yeah. listeners, that's Cape CrossFit's group, basically. That was you training for the Cape CrossFit. Yeah, uh, we were training for our, we were doing our CPR yeah, first aid the, courses. Yeah. And Jobs is the founder of the founder, Cape yeah. CrossFit Gardens and Newlands. Yeah. So, uh, so we've spoken about for the coach and Justin said like too much technology can create that uh, analysis paralysis mm. and people don't know what they're looking at. They're going to go home and look at their heart rate data and they're going to be like, oh, I don't really know what that means, but uh, I guess higher is better. So it's going to go crazy next time. But, uh, and then for the athlete. So we want to talk about uh, a few options uh, for the athletes and see uh, what you should be using in your training, if anything. So we've, we've broken it down into a few levels. And uh, I've said that level one is just basic step counting. You can get a pedometer, you can get a clicks for like 10 rand, I'm sure. And you can just make sure that you're moving every day. You can uh, just do a certain number of steps. And we've all heard the 10,000 step rule. Yeah. Uh, you guys have obviously heard that. And I got a little fun fact for you. Um, that in 1965 in Japan, there was a company um, and they invented a, a step counter. And they called this company, uh, I'm gonna, probably going to say it wrong, Manpo Kai. Manpo Kai. Manpo Kai. Manpo Kai. And uh, it just, it, it literally translates to 10,000 step meter. And no idea why mm-hmm. they called it that. And then since then, everyone's decided that 10,000 steps is the right number to move every day. Sure. So there's no scientific backing. It's just <laughs> uh, this guy named it 10,000. Luckily, he didn't name it like 50,000 step meter. Otherwise, we'd never get out of discovery. <laughs> that first points. one crashed after 10,000. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's how long it lasts. And uh, then we're going to start there. Yeah. So yeah, just just an arbitrary uh, number. Full of facts today. Full of facts today, yeah. But Quirky, uh, you you um, you're taking this podcast to ne- new levels. Yeah, yeah, fact, factual, factual levels. Factual levels. Let's yeah. stop that immediately. Uh, we have to change the intro. Yeah, yeah. You're no you're creating an environment for results here. <laughs> <laughs> we took fitness uh, nonsense and facts. Facts and and, and results. Yeah, and results. this is called results and no excuses. Yes. So. Measure your steps. I think that's cool. If you're sedentary, uh, there's nothing wrong with saying, I'm going to hit 10,000 steps every day. Uh, that'll help as a first step. So that's level one. Uh, also part of level one is some posture enhancers, which I haven't seen locally, but uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger used to talk about this. It was like a belt, and every time you slashed over, it yes. buzzed, and then made you sit <laughs> straight. And then more, like a, more like a reminder. Yeah, and you slash. And so then so one of my personal training clients, uh, Michelle uh, Tusha, she should be listening to this. Uh, she bought one of those postural... Um, uh, buzzers, if yeah. you want to call it that, and it fits right in your T spine. It's a little white uh, gadget, yeah. situated sit right over here, yeah. and basically the same thing. Uh, as you slouch forward, it immediately buzzes and creates like a little bit of a stimulus, yeah. and you're like, hey, and you get back into perfect posture. Yeah. She said, however, it's so intense and so sensitive that if you use it for too long, um, it's quite exhausting. So like, you'd have to train yourself. Like you would do a training session. So yeah. right, I'm going to put my posture 
um, what's the reminder reminder check her yeah. uh, on and uh, I'm only going to do it for 20 minutes today because I mean in all reality after like two minutes of sitting up straight you're going to slouch yeah. so uh, you can't be like ah oh, you know I'm going to put this on I'm going to go through my daily activities and I'm just going to be fucking yeah. twerking every five <laughs> seconds uh, in my board meeting you know <laughs> so uh, yeah you, it's, it might be something you want to share with your friends yeah. but I think it's a cool concept okay Cool. So the posture reminder is a yes from Justin. Yeah. Um, Reminds me of putting gross stuff on your fingers to stop you biting your nails. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Yeah. I did that to my child once. <laughs> and? When he was small. Yeah. Yeah. He, like for, for a month or two, he had a habit of biting his nails. And you think he just grew out of it. Uh, like he just forgot about it. So uh, but we put uh, like uh, bitter stuff on his nails. Bitter stuff. Yeah. yeah. And he bites it and then... Like, ah, like, ah. And, and so it worked on him. It worked. It helped, yeah. but, but I think he just grew out of it naturally. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Diane used to bite her nails growing up. Yeah. And my parents put this stuff on her nails. And uh, she just said, I'll fucking eat my nails through that. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, I'm going to learn to love this stuff. Yeah. I was like, Diane, does that not taste great? She's like, nah. <laughs> you know, mixed with the nails. Mixed with the nails is phenomenal. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't know if that works in everybody. Yeah, jeez. Diane's in a hate be right now. <laughs> oh, okay. So level two is activity tracking. And these watches are really, really cheap. These watches are like, you can get like 500 Rand activity trackers, which also just count your steps. Uh, some of them, the more advanced ones, like remind you to stand up if you've been sitting for too long. Some of them remind you, like the Apple Watch will say like, uh, take five seconds to breathe in, breathe out. Like stuff like that. Uh, which is cool and they create external triggers and make you a bit less stressed maybe or yes. maybe a bit more stressed because you're always being reminded to stand up and you're trying to finish your work can I do you want me to talk about that yeah I bought myself a whoop yeah I know we, we, we've we agreed we'll chat about this a bit later but I'll bring it in now yeah um, I think the technology is great I think it's got a long way to go um, I think I think it uh essentially creates a great awareness around uh, sleep quality and mm. duration. But for me, what it started doing was it started pointing out just how poor I was at getting in the green, which was getting a full eight hours of sleep. You can set your, your goal. Mm. So like the, the, the watch will determine if you're in the green, if your goal is to sleep eight hours or nine hours or 10 what hours. What does in the green mean? getting in the green is like you're fully recovered enough to perform okay. at an optimal level. Okay. But then you start creating this idea that if you're not in the green, you're not going to perform, which is not true either. Mm. You might perform less, but it's not to say that you can't PB or take yourself further along the spectrum of performance. Yeah. So like, let's say for three days, I would be in the yellow or like I'd be off by half an hour on my sleep. Like seven and a half hours, not a, not a bad sleep. You know, like a, I'm sure as a, as uh, an athlete from back in the day, you would identify with like se- seven to seven and a half being pretty yeah, decent. Yeah, it was fine. With, yeah. It was fine. It was enough, right? Mm. But maybe you're not feeling your your like like you're not feeling like you're gonna take over the world, mm. you know? Um, so what what I would st- I would still be performing, but what it would do for me is it would create a lot of stress around falling to sleep. So I'd be like, okay, I gotta get into bed now, and if I don't fall asleep within twenty minutes, I'm not gonna get my eight hour bracket. And mm. then like an hour later you've got this anxiety around the sleep so you start worrying about it yeah so i actually stopped using it after a while um i'd like to get back into it but it requires a lot of discipline naturally so uh, but it also requires you to not be a, a an ocd uh individual because yeah. mm. um, it, it causes a lot of anxiety for me as well yeah so yeah like on that topic technology can be good yeah and it can be bad yeah Depends who you are. So I think we wanted to talk about the psychological effects and we might as well do it now. So there's, uh, like you said, you can, we said earlier, you can have analysis paralysis. So you're just looking at your numbers too much. You can, you can psych yourself out. Like if you didn't get to your green zone in the whoop, you just decide, oh, I'm not going to PB today. So I might as well just uh, have a cuck day anyway. And I'm just yes. going to go really slow. I'm going to squat light and I'm not going to worry about it. And also we can spend too much time just looking at technology. You spend so much time looking at your phone, analyzing the data, uh, you're, just, uh, you're just wasting time in your day and not performing anyway. So there can be a, a bad thing. And also the thing we don't think about is uh, the bad side of technology is sitting on Instagram. You're looking at Instagram and you see, oh, my competition just snatched the PB today. But uh, you don't remember that he hasn't snatched the PB in the last three years. 
and the fact that his Fran time was just four minutes uh, slower than his previous uh, best Fran time. Yes. So you're just looking at the highlights of everyone else and you're comparing it to your full picture. Absolutely. And uh, you can psych yourself out. So that's also a bad part of technology. Yeah. Yeah. So that's also there. So activity tracking, is that a, a yes from you, Just? Uh, yes, I like activity tracking. I think, there's a lot, I, I, think, I think capturing data over time is going to expose good and bad trends, yeah. and that needs to be considered, yeah. especially in games or sports where the difference between coming first and second is a centimeter, a split second, um, a kg on the bar, you know, one rep. Yeah. Like those things only happen by ironing out all the kinks. Yeah. Um and yeah, if your if your competitors are doing it better than you are, yeah. you're losing. Yeah. You know? So I think it's necessary. Okay. So that takes us to level three. So we've had a yes so far for the simple technology. Now mm-hmm. we get to level three and we start talking about things that are a bit more complicated. And maybe we should talk about it for the average athlete and for the elite athlete. So heart rate monitoring either with a chest strap or a, like a, just a normal watch that measures your heart rate. Yes. Um, and, and those things sometimes do other things like measure distance and speed. They can do sleep tracking. Yeah. They can like, tell you if you're like, in the green. Like for cyclists, measuring, measuring cadence and wattage and heart rate is... Like they'll tell you that without a heart rate monitor, it's... Um, uh, sorry, without a heart rate monitor and, a, and, and wattage and all that jazz, those statistics, uh, you might as well not even get on your bike. Okay. Yeah, like I think cycling is one of those sports. Uh, you can even, uh, can get uh, Glenn and Yale to give an opinion on this, but um, like training is governed by the wattage mm. on the bike. Yeah. Um, so don't even think of getting on if you're not. So if you're a cyclist, you need that. Get up. Yeah. You need a, a, a big bank account. Yeah. And a decent Tom Tom, Garmin advice device. Yeah. I'll just stop at the big bank account. Yes, I, just, I, would, I wouldn't spend that money. I'd keep it in my big bank account. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Matt, you're only going to do sports that don't require uh, huge capital. Yes. yes. Beach like rugby. swimming. A beach rugby. Yes. Speedo. <laughs> yeah, he uses old Speedo from 25 years ago. And he's also from the DRC. <laughs> yes. I'm not breaking any. The PRC, Plumstead <laughs> Republic. Yes. Plumstead Republic of swimming. Um, so... Uh, heart rate monitoring um, for the average person is it any use besides getting your discovery points and getting free smoothies um, unless you have cardio sorry cardiac issues yeah probably not don't worry about it no. probably not but no. listen it's, being, it's becoming such a um, a common it's becoming such a common place it's just become a thing it's like it, 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 like honestly an Apple watch nowadays costs a lot of money but you're going to be able to buy a heart rate monitor mm. for like 50 bucks in the future it's, yeah. it's like it's just there it's gonna be built in nano chipped yeah. into your fucking wrist yes done yeah. yeah so there was actually a little article that I read that they have uh, smart fabrics with heart rate uh, heart rate monitoring um, built into them yeah so you wear a long sleeve t-shirt obviously and it touches your arm or whatever yeah. and it measures your heart rate so they say that the most accurate is around the chest yes yes, yes. maybe they'll make one sort of nice tight around the chest well they've got the new ones now they go um, on your ring finger Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I forget the name of the company, but um, so you've got Whoop around the wrist. You've got most, uh, so like Garmin's yeah. and Tom Toms and things around the, 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 chest, yeah. the chest. And then you've got the Aura Ring. Aura Ring. 5,000 Rand. Put, the, put it on, show them that you're married, and. <laughs> yes. so I'm married to CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> to my heart rate. <laughs> I'm married to my heart rate. I'm married to my stats. Yes. Give me some numbers to crunch. Yeah, <laughs> let me crunch those numbers. Yeah, crunch. I'm going to fucking outperform everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Give me Excel. I'm drooling at the side yeah. of the Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> Give it to yeah. you. Don't you dare show me a pie chart. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Give me one. <laughs> so, uh, I think we've spoken a bit about this already, but can technology be a bad thing? We've spoken about the psychological problems mm. of too much time looking at this data and uh, creating false comparisons and that sort of thing. But uh, there's some physical uh, issues also. Physically, I'd say um, you've covered these two these two things. I'm going to say now is uh, basically if you, let's say you're training in a in a heavy environment, like Justin said earlier for Fran, you keep looking at your watch and worrying about it or whatever, looking at your ring and yeah. wherever the data goes. Yeah. So physically, that could be um, hindering to a, a performance. Yeah. Um, then sleep sleep tracking. Um, 
uh, like, are you making decisions on numbers or are you going to make decisions on how you feel? Yeah, so like Justin said, like, like just, just like, yeah, just he like wakes up coming. and he feels okay, but his whoop tells him he's uh, red and he's like, oh shit. Yeah, 100%. I had a couple of those days and I was like, I was driving into work for training and I said to Charles in the car, I'm like, my watch is telling me right now that I shouldn't train today. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> But I'm going to fucking train. Yeah, let's pack yeah. it up. Uh, let's, let's pack it up and go home. <laughs> you know, and, and, and yes, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, there were some days where it was like, listen, you you didn't get enough recovery and I'm like, I'm feeling terrible. You know, so cool, I'm going to reduce the intensity. It's valuable. Yeah. But again, it's around the wrist. How accurate is it? Mm. You know, yeah. Yeah, I was rolling around in my sleep last night. Cool. I mean, the watch is picking up activity the whole time. It's like <laughs> you, you, you were didn't you were not sleeping? It's like no, I was sleeping. You know. Yeah. yeah. So again, you got to take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah. And uh, not get too caught up in the numbers. Yeah. So well, that's the thing. So, like, for all, all the people like me and everyone to have these things, you got to be well educated in it. To yes. Understand what the hell's going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. There's a lot of like physio- physiology that goes behind it. So everyone's got all these numbers and stuff and you know, you got your Excel sheet and you're like, well, I don't know what the hell, did I do better or yeah. what's going on? Um, oh, higher equals better or should I have been at this? Should I have been at this zone and so on? Many, yeah. many, many members I find, I don't know if you guys want to jump in on this comment, but I find that when I ask them for their numbers, they actually couldn't be bothered because it is quite stressful. Yeah. Even getting a score out of them at the whiteboard sometimes is yeah. an issue. It's Smiley like, face. So, oh, I just want to give a smiley face. I, 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 I can't work out two plus three minus four and one rope climb equals 10 yeah. points. What is that? Yes. You know, <laughs> like some people, they need to make an effort. I, I want them to make an effort, but I don't know if they want to. Yeah. It's stressful yeah. for them. So look at that watch and, and dictate your the rest of your day. Yeah. So in University of Pittsburgh, um, they did a study, an A-B test on basically a Two, two groups of people, one had wearables and uh, they were told to, um, uh, this was dictated off their diet and then um, off trying to lose weight, that was the goal. And then yes. the other group was told to uh, go do it off diet and this group was to do it, follow it off your wearables. Um, in the end, uh, they both did lose weight, but the ones that had not, I mean the ones that did it do off diet won, basically. So, the, so using the wearables actually made their performance worse? Yeah, they did lose weight, but uh, it, they didn't beat the guys that actually just went on eating healthy. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So, I think we've kind of covered it already, but uh, the technology that we use. I wear a, a little cheapy watch, which costs a thousand rand by Garmin, and I wear it so that I can get discovery points. So that I can get free smoothies and free vouchers to Cape Union Mart. And that's pretty much all. Uh, I look at it occasionally when I'm uh, running, uh, just to see if I'm actually running hard or not. But other than that, uh, I don't really look at it. You still use your Whoop. Uh, Whoop is currently in the bedside drawer. Yeah. I'm saving uh, 500 Rand a month on my subscription. 500 Rand a month? Yeah. To analyze the data? Mm-hmm. No way. That's ridiculous. So yeah, I wasn't aware of the of the direct debit part. Cheapest. So what the, the, so you've got to pay for the data to be sent to some guy on his Excel sheet? No, no, no. The data like to, to, to make use of their app. Actually use the... Oh, so where it's like... It could, so then it's going to show... All it's going to do is show you the data. You have yeah. to interpret that yourself. Yeah, it kind of like it, it. It tells you like in the green, in the red. It takes your data and it puts yeah. it into their 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 software, yeah. basically. And then their software is just based off uh, a thousand people's uh, little bits of data. And then they're yeah. like, okay, well, Justin fits into this. I guess he's he's twenty three years yeah, old. Yeah, it's it's like it's like very. Listen, if you really fucking want to crunch your numbers, you can get a cheapy heart rate monitor and track yeah. it every yeah. single day. But they're taking the hard the, the effort out for you. Like yeah. you go to sleep, you train picks up your heart rate, puts it in the app, it tells you a story. Um, again, again, like I got to ask myself as an athlete, am I disciplined enough to go to bed on time, wake up, feel recovered, go to training and get it done? Yeah. Like regardless of what the watch is telling me, I really get my fucking training done. Gotta I got to train hard. I got to, I got to go hard every day and trust that I recover enough before the next training session. Yeah. Um, I can't let the watch dictate that. Yeah. Yeah. I think much. you're fine if uh, not every CrossFit athlete's wearing one, so you're good. Yeah, you're right, right? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Matt, you've got a Garmin. What's that? I've got a TomTom, Tom, Tom, yeah. which I think have pulled out of SA. No. I don't even know if they're actually even going at all. They pulled out of SA. I use, them for, uh, use it for the heart rates uh, to give me coffee. Yes. yes. That's, That's pretty it. much it. Oh, if I go for a run, I'd love to get the distance and the, um, uh, how long it took. Obviously, yeah. if you want to do a 5K. Uh, that's great. I never yeah. look at any of the things like the heart rate for that. Um, maybe the pace, mm. um, but barely. Yeah. Uh, but 
uh, what's interesting I was going to say is the I mean how accurate is the GPS on this versus your one next to me oh I don't know mine doesn't have a GPS mine's rubbish so like oh, my PB's off this true PB's probably you know? yeah. if I ran a circle on yeah. a track I think it's pretty accurate this, I think it's pretty accurate you, yeah. you, you probably find that all these watches in their um, disclaimers will say that there's a a, a, a variance of like yeah. zero to five seconds yeah you know? It's like, whoops, we've um, got the wrong satellite. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Now we're back do on do again. you remember the advert that came out for that watch? Because I wanted no. to buy that watch as well. And I remember a lot of people were like, it's a heart rate monitor. And you got this check running with like this big sports bra on, like just capturing everyone's attention. And then like, I think if I recall correctly, then the watch comes into view. But like by this point, you've been watching it for like a minute already. <laughs> you're just like, I've got to get this watch. And then some people were just like commenting, like and they're like, is it necessary to like have a Victoria's Secret model vibe going on in the background? Yeah, it's advertising. Um, I know the. I mean, Matthew's sale got on this, one now. <laughs> it worked. It worked. The sale on this is well, this is a music one, so it it takes you can put music on it and it connects to whatever. Oh, that's two nice. Things you wear. That's nice. Yeah. But and also the thing about this Tom Tom is the price of this versus what it has, I've got everything, I've got the cycling, the swimming, it's waterproof, it's for running. Yes. Um, what else? There's a few other things about it. There's obviously the gym and the whole step counter and all that stuff. Um, which other ones you would buy like for the same price uh, and it would only be a running watch. Yeah. But that's yes. different brands. Yeah. But we won't get into that today. No, not today. So what do you think of underwater music? Underwater music. Well, I like haven't tried, I've heard about swimming. it. It does it it sits and it like vibrates your little anvils and stirrups and so on. Yeah. In your head. Yeah. Is that just talking about the headphone yeah. thing? That, that one, I haven't tried it, but I know that Virgin Active for the longest time had underwater speakers. Hmm. For which, the oh, I never swimming. got to hear that. It's not a, a consent, yeah? No, I don't think no. so. It was like this dull like <laughs> It sounded like they were like... Like whales. They just turned up the music on the outside. Yes, yeah, so I was like, is this really playing underwater? Um, it sounds like it's coming from miles away. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've seen some underwater um, headphones being promoted and I'd like to give that a go sometime. Oh. Yeah, it'll be cool. Maybe try it in the Someone, bath. Someone uh, find, find those people out there and uh, we'll, we'll review them for you. Yeah. Do you think if you take some AirPods and go underwater in the bath, it'll work? Probably not a good idea. I think you must try it. Yeah, you try it. Do a video you, later. After you spend five minutes. Put your whip on and your ring and all your other shit yes. and get in the bath. <laughs> With a toaster. <laughs> With a <Yeah>. toaster. <laughs> all your uh, different relators. Yes, I'll become a Marvel he's a superhero. <laughs> whoop man. Whoop man. <laughs> whoop whoop. <laughs> oh, no, that's funny. <laughs> okay, move on. So, uh, our takeaways, in summary, we've said most of the stuff already. Does the average gym go and need this technology? No. Probably not. No. Unless you've got a hard condition, or does a competitive athlete need it? Maybe. Yes. Um, Download BoxChamp first. Use that for a month, and if you're still using it after a month, then maybe you can upgrade to a Whoop. Whoop Champ. Um, I think uh, the most important thing, especially for the competitive person, is to ask yourself how you feel. Talk to yourself. Like Be like, I, mm. I trained five times this week, and I feel really bad. Uh, and next week, I'm trained three times, yeah, man, and I then think I feel you'll, great. You'll get so far off that before you have to worry about all mm. the nitty-gritty yeah yeah so you get become a bit smarter and like more in tune with yourself over mm. the long term um and then there's this cool thing called rates of perceived exertion you know about that Justin? yes yeah what's that explain so it. rpe is like hey courts how are you feeling right now and courts is like well on a scale of one to ten ten being tired and one being not tired i am an eight mm. so coach is like okay well i want you to get up to a nine for this workout and hold that there for as long as you can yeah. you know so that's one way of doing it, like creating awareness around perceived intensity. Like what is your nine versus Matthew's nine? It can, yeah. it can be individualized. And then you can also be like, okay, cool. So courts, listen, um, uh, I need you to make sure that you don't go more than seven. Yes. And if you're like, no, this is definitely an eight. I'm struggling. I feel like, I feel like stopping this workout. Okay, don't go near the eight. Yeah. Stay at seven and take it easy. Yeah. I think there's also, uh, people also use RPE for things like squat programs. Like you can say, okay, I want you to squat up to a heavy triple at a eight RPE. So you, when you do it, you feel like, oh, that was really tough, but I didn't die. Or if you're going to do a, a, a three rep max at a, a nine and a half RPE, you're like, yeah. I just about finished that. I, I almost passed I that. I don't like programs like that. You don't? I love programs like that. No, so I, I feel like I need to go lighter. Yeah, well, that's the thing. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe Mr. Yoga Man can get in here and, and give some insight at some point. But I think like... I remember he, Chris once programmed a program called Strength by Feel. 
Mm. And it's like, you could argue that a percentage can hold you back. Yeah. So go heavy if you feel good. Yeah. Right. But I personally prefer to just be told, right, today doing 80% or like 80 to 85%. The range is 5%. If you're having a bit of a shit day, stay at 80. If you're feeling good, build to 85. Yeah. But then at least I can walk away saying I hit the intended stimulus, you know? Yeah. Rather than, ah, go with a three. I'm like, oh, well, today a three might be like 100 kgs. Yeah. Uh, and coach is like, bro, you were supposed to hit 120. Yeah. And what's going on here? Yeah. You know, you're like, it's very subjective. Yeah. So... I don't like it. Okay, cool. I, I like it though because it, it's because sometimes I think the program is too heavy, and then I, if I do this number, my knees are gonna fall off, and I'm yes. gonna die, and people have to carry me out. Usually. Yeah, but you know what? I can respect that because if you have a, if you have this perception that mm. you're not ready for something in a day, yeah, then you should feel empowered to yeah. make that call. I think something maybe it's different for an athlete versus yeah a, a general pop. A general pop, yeah. Well, I think there's one thing that we figured out today um, is that psychology is a big factor Massive. in this stuff. Massive. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the end of our, our main topic for today. And we, and we, I think we've covered some good stuff today, some good Obviously. information. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're going to move on to listener feedback. Yes. Uh, could you please sing the theme song? Listener feedback song. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Why are you not applauding? I don't know what that's uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was gonna add a drum roll into it. I just thought that's wonderful. I think you should do something like a tunnel. The tunnel. I also sell burbles at chickens. <laughs> we got very little listener feedback, but okay. um, everyone likes us. It comes in waves. Eh? Some <laughs> some weeks we get ten feedbacks. Other weeks yeah. we get one. I did. I must say, I thought we would get a lot more. Um, uh, negative responses to the last week's episode not because of the quality or anything like that mm. I just thought a lot of people have more opinions mm. yes the, um, the vegan issue yes yeah, yeah. Um, not many people said anything at least on a on a social side of things okay or a yeah. digital been, side of things they've been chatting amongst themselves mm, possibly they'll be like fuck those guys yeah. uh, I, I, listen I don't think we took a very uh, a personal stance like no. we, didn't, we didn't attack well, anybody no. we were just giving uh, the very clear indication that research needs to be done yeah and that maybe it was our disclaimer then yeah and and being um in the camp of moderation might be better until you know all the facts yeah definitely yeah. all right so uh jared says too many shirts are being worn on the show too many shirts yeah I'm who's jared angry. jared uh i don't know I'm, let me open this thing but oh. i can't tell people his surname jared uh, s9 jared i'll have you know that fatty's sitting here right now with his shirt <laughs> off my shirt off there's generally it's hot in this room if we're recording here. Yeah. Justin usually has a shirt off. Courtney has got to get naked. Yeah. I pulled yeah. my knee sleeves down in the intro. Yeah. I never. I said to Matt before we started, I had no shirts on because it was so hot, and I went upstairs to get water, and all the girls were standing there, and I was like, oh jeez, I hate walking around without a shirt on. So I put my shirt back on. <laughs> Not comfortable. Court- Courtney shy. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Jared. I think I've only taken my shirt off like. Two three times yeah. in a workout, and but his shorts are off right now. Yeah, my shorts are off. Shy down <laughs> yes. Just send him a DM. He'll he'll <laughs> engage <laughs> with you further. He is putting your dick off to all. <laughs> yes. So Diane says she loves this podcast. Ah, oh, thank thanks, you, Diane. Diane. Thank, thank you, Diane. Diane. Um, and our friend overseas in uh, France, uh, he says interesting topic, lads. Enjoyed this one, and he's talking about last week's episode. Ah, oh, great. Thanks, Kieran. Um, his name's Kieran. Yeah, I wonder what Kieran's doing now. He's he the third for this man. Is it? Was it second? Did he come second? Second. Yeah. I don't remember. Yes, he came, he came already. second. He came second. I wonder if he's going to do a sanctional. Jeez, Keelan, tell us if you're going to do a sanctional, please. He must, um, he must sign up for a sanctional. Yeah. And then uh, Sharon says, this podcast, oh, this podcast are my favorite, these podcasts are my favorite new driving buddies, s- smoothing the way through the traffic. Love the banter and chats. Oh. Heart. Thanks, Sharon. Hearts to Sharon also. Hearts to Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. We love Sharon. <laughs> cool. That's that it. That is a listener feedback. Yeah. Sing the outro, Justin. I just want, can, before I sing the outro, can I just say, we have 139 followers and it's bugging me that we can't get one more follower. We need one more. Oh, we got 140 now. 140. Yeah, 140. Hey. <laughs> I think like, I don't think it's really accurate. So I think it fluctuates. Yeah. It always fluctuates and like, it's a bot or whatever follows you and this dude follows you and that dude follows you. Because it was 139 earlier and then it'll be 140 and then we'll look tomorrow and it'll be 139 again. Okay. I think I'm not so sure. So people are flirting with us. People yeah. are flirting or it's just Instagram doing no, Come on guys, just uh, just be back. be a follower or don't be a follower. Don't don't be somewhere in between. Follow <laughs> us and well that is on that is follow us on Instagram, no Rex Podcast, uh, Facebook, no Rex Podcast, Twitter, no Rex Podcast. Then email us. No results media at gmail.com. Mm. Yes. And we got it right this week. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Has anyone sent us an email? 
Um, no? No. No, it was an email. <laughs> I'm just thinking, we got a message about uh, audio quality, so I replied to them, but it was an email. Oh, um, so okay. Just right. volumes and stuff. So with that, Justin, can you sing the outro? Beep, 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 be